Isn't it bizarre? What's bizarre? Space oh, phenomena. Definitely. Today we're talking about some space phenomena that we might get to see in our lifetime if we live long enough, that is. Yep. And uh, some that we missed, unfortunately. Unless you have been alive long enough, then you might have seen it. All right, we're starting off our list with the passing of a really big asteroid, and it's gonna be coming pretty damn close. And it's also flying by soon, in 2029. Apophis is a sizable asteroid with a diameter of about 1,200 feet. It first caught NASA's attention back in 2004. It quickly earned a reputation as one of the more concerning objects orbiting the sun because of its close approach to Earth. On April 13th of 2029, Apophis will swing by our planet at a distance closer than the moon, coming within about 20,000 miles. That's crazy. Definition of close call. The name Apophis itself is pretty dramatic as well. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Apophis was a deity symbolizing chaos and destruction. So quite fitting for an asteroid that's coming so close to rudely crashing into us. Again though, Apophis will not collide with Earth during its 2029 tour. We will get a pretty stunning sight in the night sky though, visible to the naked eye without even needing a telescope. So the naked eye. Apophis won't be flying by again until 2068. Some of us will be around to see it again. Some of us unfortunately won't. Either way though, it'll be flying by at a much further distance in 2068. Next up, we have a once in a lifetime star explosion that's gonna happen sometime later this year, 2024, between now and September. And we will be able to see it with just the naked eye. For one week, it will seem as though a new star has appeared in the sky just east of the Hercules constellation as the white dwarf of the Corona Borealis star system explodes, releasing an insane amount of light. This happens when the white star dwarf, which is the left over core of a collapsed star in the Borealis uses its gravity to pull material from a red giant, an incredibly large star with high luminosity and low surface temperature. As the white dwarf draws more and more materials towards itself, it begins to build on the surface of the collapsed star, causing its temperature to rise until the intense heat blows out a layer of the white dwarf surface, causing an explosion that will appear on Earth to be as bright as the North Star Polaris, the 46th brightest star in our galaxy, despite many people thinking it's the brightest. That's actually serious. The phenom- not that serious, it's the star serious. The phenomenon will last for approximately one week, illuminating our skies before the most luminous nova of our time fades into its non-luminous state for the next 80 years before it all happens again. We only have 36 years to wait until we see a spectacularly bright comet pass us by. Comet 15P Finley is set to make a close approach to Earth in 2060. Discovered in 1886 by William Henry Finley, it's a periodic comet that follows a predictable orbit around the sun. Comets like Finley are icy bodies made up of dust, rock, and frozen gases. As they approach the sun, solar radiation causes the materials to vaporize and stream away from the comet, creating these beautiful glowing tails. During its 2060 visit, Comet Finley is going to pass especially close to Earth. It's gonna fly by at 4.6 million miles, making it one of the closest comets to pass us in the last 100 years. It'll be visible in the night sky, even with the naked eye. Next up, we have the brightest supermoon of the 21st century set to take place on December 6th of 2052. The name supermoon was first introduced in 1979 when scientists noticed that at certain times, the moon appeared to be much larger and much brighter than normal. It was then determined that the change in the moon's appearance was due to its orbit, which is not perfectly round, causing the moon's distance to the Earth to increase and decrease depending on where it is in its rotation. But there's something else. Because space is just a bit unstable, the closest and furthest distances are not always the same. And that's exactly what makes the December 2052 supermoon so rare and so special. It will be the closest to Earth the moon has ever been in this century, 17,000 miles closer to Earth than usual. It will be pretty hard to miss considering its size and luminosity in the night sky, but just to be safe, like James said, 
I'd still mark your calendars. Are you oddly satisfied by things forming into a perfect line? Well, you want to keep your eyes on the sky on August 28th of this year, because all the planets in our solar system will be lined up. If you miss this one, you'll have to wait till September 8th of 2040. Mark that down in your calendar. Unfortunately, I got something going on that day, so I won't get to see it myself, but I'll make sure to catch the one happening this year. So what exactly is this lineup of planets? Well, it's referred to as the Parade of Planets, an event where several planets align in the sky. Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and of course, Neptune. Each planet can be seen under specific conditions and times throughout the night, starting with the evening. Saturn will be the first planet to appear. It'll be bright enough to be visible to the naked eye. How many times do we say naked eye in this? And this, is there any other word for naked eye? Uh, just plain unaided eye, just eye. unaided eye. All right, it'll be bright enough to be visible to the unaided eye. As the night progresses, Uranus will become visible with high powered binoculars. Jupiter and Mars will follow, and these will be easily seen with the unaided eye. By dawn, Mercury will rise in the constellation Leo. This will also be visible to your eyes without any equipment, but closer to the horizon, so it'll be harder to spot as the sun rises. Next up, we have Comet West, one of the brightest and most impressive comets of the 20th century. Yes, unfortunately, this one has already passed, but it is so cool, I figured it was worth a mention. The comet was discovered in November of 1975 by a Danish astronomer named Richard West in photographs taken at the European Southern Observatory. Fast forward to February 25th of 1976 and the comet made of ice and rock first became visible by the naked eye. In the days that followed, the comet grew brighter as it became closer to Earth, soaring across the skies, leaving behind a luminous tail of dust and gas. While bright comets are not relatively uncommon, the fact that when Comet West reached its peak brightness, it became bright enough to study during full daylight made viewing its passing truly a once in a lifetime opportunity that we have all missed. But the photos look pretty cool. In rare cases, depending on when you're born and of course when you die, you may be able to spot Halley's Comet twice in a lifetime. It passes about every 75 to 76 years. We last saw it in 1986 and we'll be seeing it again likely in 2061. So if you were around in 86, to see it but young enough that you'll likely be alive in 2061, then congrats. Halley's Comet is one of the most famous comets in history, named after British astronomer Edmund Halley, who first plotted its orbit. If you have any friends who are unhealthily obsessed with the Heaven's Gate cult, check on them in 2061. Um, if you know, you know. Next up, we have the darkest solar eclipse of the century, set to take place on July 26th of 2029. For those of you who are unaware of what a lunar eclipse is and the difference between a lunar and solar eclipse, allow me to explain. A solar eclipse takes place when the moon sits in a precise spot, blocking out the sun, causing total darkness. A lunar eclipse takes place when the Earth sits in an equally as precise spot between the sun and the moon, blocking the sunlight from reaching the moon. While you might think this would just cause the sky to go black and appear as though there is no moon in the sky, what generally happens is that the moon actually turns red, because red rays penetrate our atmosphere much easier than any other kind of light. The upcoming 2029 eclipse is estimated to last 1 hour and 42 minutes, and at one point it will appear as though the moon has gone pitch black and is being surrounded by a fiery red ring, which sounds super cool and almost like an ode to Lord of the Rings. If you're into that, mark it on your calendar. This next one is kinda sad in a way, somewhat like a passing of the torch. So in 2100, the North Star will begin to make its exit. The North Star has been, of course, guiding us north forever. It's not perfectly aligned with the true north, though, at least not always. Earth is kinda like a spinning top as it orbits the sun, causing its axis to slowly trace out a circle over a period of about 26,000 years. This movement affects where the North Star appears in the sky, of course. Currently, it's close to the point in the sky that marks the true north, making it a fairly reliable marker. But as the Earth's axis shifts, it gradually moves away from the true north. By March 
August 24th of 2100, it'll be at its closest position to true north, aligning nearly perfectly. But that'll be kinda like one last hurrah. After 2100, it will slowly begin to drift away from the true north again, and in about 2000 years, another star, Gamma Cepheus, will take over as the North Star. So, the star that once guided sailors and explorers for centuries will pass on its role to another. And finally, we have the Earth Eclipse, which is like a solar or lunar eclipse, except it can only be seen from Mars. That's right, one of the most exciting events of the 21st century, and we won't even be able to see it with the naked eye. The eclipse, which is set to take place on November 10th of 2084, is also referred to as planetary transit, and it happens when the Moon and Earth both block Mars's view of the Sun, making them appear as nothing more than bright silhouettes. As I said, we won't be able to see it from Earth, that is. But the eclipse is scheduled for 2084, and it only takes about six to eight months to get to Mars, meaning we have about 60 years to either put some telescope satellites into orbit around Mars to capture an image of the event, or perhaps put ourselves on Mars to see it happening firsthand in real time. It's definitely possible. I ended up coming up with a good replacement for a naked eye, but it wasn't until, you know, after I'd said naked eye for every point, um, but uh, just the nude eye. It's big, it's a huge difference. Well, uh, we hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we hope you got guys as a uh, calendars marked down for these incredible dates. Try and live long enough to see some of these. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of these are decades, aw decades away, but you know. And uh, go put some clothes on your eyes, you guys. What are you doing? Yeah, we call them sunglasses. Mm.